So now you might ask yourself, why has he got that thing torn apart again? Um, so as some of you may know, probably anybody that follows me that's on the Vintage 6 forum probably saw that I went to Dino this the other day and we cut it short. Um, we found a vacuum leak and that's just like a dead showstopper until you can figure that out um, for tuning. Um, now I had pressure tested this head um, I'll back up for a second. Jeff pressure tested the head. I pressure tested the head myself before this head went on because of all the issues that we've had. No issues, no leaks. Um, fast forward to yesterday when we went to go tune this. Um, they're, the guys that do the tuning, they go through and make sure there isn't any mechanical issues first. And they came and told me as they were getting ready to dyno it, they said, we got a vacuum leak. And I said, where? And they said, well, it's down by the head bolt. I said, well, it can't be into the head bolt bosses. They're, they're way too far away. It can't be it. So the head would have to be seriously cracked. And I drove it 50 miles there, and there was no problem. Um, so we went through. While we were there, we changed. We pulled the adapter plate off, put a gasket on it. Maybe you thought that was it. No. So I, I decided I was going to bring it back home and uh, do some troubleshooting myself. And I did. And I found the problem. See it down there? See it? Don't look it up. Don't look at the where it's leaking from the plastic. Look directly below it to the left. See the bubbles? I, uh, I've made a fixture. Let's go take a look at that. You guys have seen this before. I made this uh, plexiglass plate, which I honestly, I wish I made it out of steel because it flexes too much, but I put a little bit of grease on it to seal it um, for pressure or vacuum. I hooked it up to pressure this time. And this works real good to uh, pressurize the manifold and see where leaks are. And um, there's a couple different ways you can do this. I use soapy water. That was a suggestion of somebody else. Um, uh, I've done that before. It works great on like natural gas lines, real low pressure stuff. You'll see bubbles. Um, I hadn't thought about doing it here, but somebody made a suggestion. It was a good, good, good suggestion. So I did soapy water. I also smoke tested it. There was nothing on the smoke test. It does not show up. Or if it does, I couldn't see it because this does leak a little bit and there is smoke that comes out of it. So um, it was it was hiding it. I found it with the soapy water. Let's go take a look at where the failure is. You can see it. If I'm careful, it'll keep focus. You can see it right there, right at the tip of my finger there. What that is, and I talked to Jeff about this, and it can happen. It is a flux pocket from the brazing process. So it'll check out just fine when you check the head. Um, after some heat cycles, that flux will disappear and it's no longer plugged and you have a small vacuum leak. And it doesn't take much. Um, it, it's still, it's just a pinhole, but it is a vacuum leak and it will screw with the system. And so when you spray this with brake cleaner or carb cleaner, that stuff's flammable. So what happens is you spray it, it sucks it in, and then the AFR drops. That's how we found it. And um, I've got a clip that I took while I was uh, at the dyno shop that I'll insert here. So that's what the uh, spray test looks like. If you uh, inserted that clip correctly here, you would have seen it. Um, so this is an easy fix. We don't need to braze this to fix it. It's a pinhole leak. Um, there are various different epoxies that will fill that just fine. There's no reason to panic or rip the head off and take it back to Jeff and have him go through it. Um, I already spoke to him about repairing it this way. It's 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 a fairly common issue. It can happen. So uh, I'm going to mix up some two-part and uh, fill that hole up. I'm going to get it real clean with some acetone. I've already got it scraped down, as you can see. Um, we're going to fill it and uh, put some tape over it, let it sit for 24 hours, and that should cure this problem. Then we'll go ahead and we'll spray it afterwards and see uh, if we still have an issue where the AFR will drop um, from a leak. So it's the next morning. Um, the repair is, quote, repair is complete. Um, I put epoxy on this, liquid epoxy, high temp, uh, 500 degree epoxy. It doesn't need to be that. 
doesn't need to be that high a temperature where this is at up top here, but I used it anyways just in case. And then I just put some masking tape over it and uh, let it cure overnight, and then I peeled it peeled it off this morning. So the hole is filled. Um, so I'm debating whether I'm just going to go for it and, and run it and spray it. Um, or if I'm going to pressure test it, I think I'm just going to run it and spray it and we'll see if we fix the problem. All right, so we've got it up and running. Um, I'm going to check it at idle here first. So the AFR is, um, let me see if I can point it out, it's that number right there. Okay, it's the second number down on the left. So we're idling pretty steady. You know, these things, they burble, so it's going to kind of go all over the place. Now, if I spray it, it's going to drop far below 12. It'll go down to the 11. So we'll also check it up at RPM here, but let's just spray it and see, see if anything happens. So I'm going to spray it now. Spraying, spraying, spraying. Yeah, hard to say. You know, I got the problem is I sprayed part of the fuel injection unit, but it's bumping around that area. Let's try that again. Okay, I just got it all over the carburetor base or the fuel injection base, so that's probably what's throwing it off right now. And when I say the base, I'm talking about around where the linkage is. It's going to leak in around there. Let's try it down at the uh, repair again. Okay, so next I'm going to take it up, uh, get it up to a more steady state, 2500 RPM or so, and spray it, and let's take a look at what it looks like up at a steady state, because it's too unstable right now to tell. But I sprayed it again and it didn't jump. So yeah, I'm not seeing anything. It's, it should drop. It should drop quite a bit and it's not. All right, so we just did it again. It's not dropping. So I think that I think we nailed it. So in summary, I think that um, we did find a problem. We did solve it. Um, uh, a little void that small can absolutely be epoxied. I debated whether I was going to use putty or the uh, liquid two-part. The reason I use the liquid two-part is just simply because it was such a small hole um, that I don't think I could have even gotten putty into it. Um, it doesn't appear to be an issue anymore. Um, you know, I found if I sprayed the hell out of it and let it puddle, eventually this thing would burble. But you know what? There's so much, there was so, I could smell the fumes standing back by the fender here, how strong it was from the spray. 
So, you know, at that point, you're just enriching the air around the whole thing. And even then, it didn't drop to... Uh, he was telling me at the dyno shop, he was getting, it was going down in the 11s, low 11s. It never got that low. The lowest I saw it was like 12.6, 12, 12.4. 12, well, I don't know. It's in the video. So yeah. I, you could be catching me in a lie there, you know. I didn't look at every every second of the video yet, but um, every time that I was watching it, I only saw it in the mid 12s. So I don't think I have a problem. I'm debating whether I want to take it back to them simply because it's a long drive and um, it's going to cost me money for them to even look at it again. Um, they don't seem like the kind of guys that, uh, you know, are going to look at it for me <laughs> a second time before they run it or bef before they decide they're going to move forward and not charge me. They kind of seem like they need the business. I was getting that sense by, um, you know, what I had to pay while I was there. So I'm not, I'm not totally sold on those guys yet. You know, they, they, their reputation is pretty good, but, um, you know, there was a little bit of arrogance there, which bothers me. Um, so uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, it, you know, it ran great all the way there and back. Um, I had taken it to Malibu Cars and Coffee and back, and then I drove it up to, uh, I stopped in Santa Clarita on the way, um, which is about, you know, I think I'd probably had 60 or 80 miles, so not a lot, but the average, which is a mix of around town, certainly, and a lot of starting and stopping on PCH, I was getting 18, which is not terrible. I think 18 miles a gallon is not far off. It's probably just a little bit rich. So um, I may not do anything with this, but I do want to get some numbers out of it. So I may just find a shop just to run it on a dyno and get the numbers. Um, so I, I don't know where I'm going to move forward at this point. I'm just not, I'm not sure. But uh, I think we did find a problem. We did solve it. Um, I just, I'm hesitant to take it back.